Well, descriptive statistics are a part of virtually every research study. Um, you know, table one typically in almost any study that you do, whether it's in a peer-reviewed publication or in your own research, is going to be a description of your of your sample or your population. So it's vital. Why do we need to do that? Why is that important? Well, we have assumptions that we make in statistics, assumptions like normality and uh, equality of variance or homogeneity of variance, uh, among others. And descriptives are really important uh, to help you know or you know figure out whether you're violating any of those assumptions. So what do you need to know? Um, again, you need to know measures of central tendency. The three biggies are the mean, which is the the average, also known as the average. Uh, sometimes you um, you'll also find the median being used. The median is the middle value, and the mode is the most common value. And of course, in a perfectly normal distribution, the mean, the median, and the mode are going to be um, you know the same number. Uh, in nature, that doesn't always happen, and I'll show you some examples. And then, of course, we also have a frequency distribution. If you're counting, say, the number of males um, and females, you know, it doesn't make any sense to run a mean or a standard deviation of that. You really need to use like a frequency table to get the to get the counts. So here again, here's um, central tendency. So the the graph on the, the left is the, the textbook graph. Uh, again, perfectly normal. Um, and the mean, the median, and the mode are all uh, lined up right in the middle at the very top point. I have a sample data set that I use, and I just ran a simple histogram for age. <clears throat> and as you can see, you could argue that this is a per, pretty close to a normal um, distribution, but if you actually do, do the calculations, you'll find in this in this case that the mean, the median, the, and the mode are actually different numbers. Uh, the mean in this case is, you know, it's kind of in the low 50s. I know I don't have those numbers on there, but you just have to trust me. It's in the low 50s. The um, the median is a little bit higher. It's in the uh, upper 50s and the, the mode actually you can see it's the highest bar there uh, is about is around 58. So anyway, it's just a way to kind of see um, how they're similar and how they're different. The other one that's also important are the measures of dispersion. These kind of throw me off. I, I heard one time, Kim, that the human brain understands measures of central tendency much more so than we understand measures of dispersion. You know, a lot of times we we'll say, "Yeah, the average." You know, you know, the my batting average or my scoring average. So we use averages as opposed, to, like, if you you wouldn't say, you know, my my batting average, you know, ranges between 200 and 300, or you know, I score, you know, between 15 and 20 points in a game. You could represent data that way. We just don't tend to do it that way. Um, so then when we see those numbers, it can kind of throw us because like, oh, what do these things even mean? Yeah, so, exactly. So again, I'm just going to point out some of the real basics here. Um, the ones that you'll see the most often are the standard deviation, the variance. Um, you'll see the standard error, or the standard error of the mean and then also the range. So again, here and here, why is it why is it important? Why don't we just need to know the mean? A lot of our tests are just simply testing the means and the difference in the means. Well, I have two examples here with the exact same mean, but the variation is quite a bit different. And that would mean quite a bit different in our our testing for probability. Um, with these two different samples. So it is really important and critical that you know the variation, however that's measured. So again, the most common of this is the uh, standard deviation. We'll get into the details, but it's the square root of the variance. Okay, and, and if, you, if I go back here, uh, again, when we're looking, or even at this, at these, if you look at the the blue lines on the left and the right, not on, not the one in the middle, 
those are typically representing um, one standard deviation. So it's actually defined. Uh, it's the middle, of, approximately the middle 68 percent of the of the scores within a sample. And then you, of course, you can go out two standard deviations, uh, which is about 95 percent. You can go out three standard deviations, which is about 99 percent. And then if you're getting, you know, you know, way far out, then it's you know much much smaller smaller probabilities. Um, the standard DV or the standard error is another one, um, and it's the standard deviation over the square root of n. So the number um, of of, um, of sample you know participants um, are, is important in the calculation of of the standard error. Sometimes it's referred as the standard error, standard error of the mean, and that's what that is. Okay, so I'm going to go now to. I'm going to go to uh, SPSS and Excel. If I get this right, Kim, make sure that I have that it's on the screen properly. Okay. Is it be is it showing in the window? Yep, I see SPSS. Okay, awesome. And for those of you, I know this is going to be very very tiny. Um, you can go full screen um, from your from your view. Uh, or again, you can just you know bear with me and then watch the recording later. There's no any number here that's critical for you to know. I just want to kind of walk you through how you would calculate both a descriptive and a frequency from the sample data set. So the way you do this, so this is just a sample. It's actually a sample of blood pressures. And I have blood pressures, and then I have things like um, you know gender and and ethnicity and actually region of the country. Um, you'll notice in SPSS these are all numbers. SPSS loves numbers more than words. So these are actually coded. So in my uh, gender, it's um, I have one for males and two for females. So it, can, it actually converts it. But you could actually have the, the actual number or the names in there and it would work just the same way. But the way you do it, you go analyze. Descriptive statistics, and it's interesting here, there's actually two different ways to do this. Um, it seems like you would go to descriptives, and you could certainly do that. And let's just take the baseline systolic pressure here. With SPSS, you can put as many values in here as you, as you want to. What you'll do is you'll click Options, and you have some standard options that come up here. So we have a mean, a standard deviation, Minimum, maximum, let's put in the variance, let's put in the range, and let's put in the standard error of the mean. So you click continue, and there's our table. So we have, um, we have a mean of uh, 133.461, a standard error of 0.3126, Standard deviation of 20.3441 and a variance of 413. Now, let's say we wanted to try it the other way. Go analyze and go to frequencies. You would think that the frequencies would be really designed more for like the count. You can actually do the same thing. You put the same value in, click on statistics, and you actually get. Um, the same options here, mean, and actually we get a couple more. We get the mean, the median, the mode, put standard deviation, variance, range. We'll put all these same values in. You could also get uh, what are called skewness and kurtosis, which is really more of like the shape um, of, the, of the distribution. Click continue, and uh, an important thing here if you're running these descriptive statistics, then uncheck the frequency tables. Click here, and you'll notice that although it's looked differently in the table, the numbers actually are exactly the same. Okay, we still have uh, the same mean, the same standard deviation, the same standard error, and the same variance. It's just laid out differently. So you can actually get the uh, the same data, you know, doing it both ways. You can also get the frequencies. So again, go back to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and Frequencies. 
Let's remove the blood pressure value. And let's put in, I have a, a variable for region. So it's where these people live. Region of the country. I am now going to check display frequency tables. And if you think about it, it doesn't make any sense to run these descriptives on, um, on, a, on a, 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 a categorical variable. Um, so I'm going to uncheck these, click continue, and I'm going to click OK. And now I have a frequency table. Uh, so it's not giving me a mean and standard deviation. What it's given me is the counts. And, I, and of course, you can convert the counts to uh, percentages. Thank you.